Now, regardless of what I thought of this movie, it still wouldn't be possible without actors who deserve fair treatment and pay in their field. While writers at the WGA were able to secure a better contract for their guild, it's important to note that at the time of recording, SAG is still fighting their fight and Bloomhouse and Universal can more than afford to sign such agreements and give them equal treatment and pay, and it's simply insane that they still refuse to do so. But that being said, let's get on with the review. They should have given Chica big titties in this movie. The Five Nights at Freddy's movie is here, and it's really, really bad. Now, yes, this is a movie for the fans, but mostly the fans who watch four movies a year, or maybe four movies ever. You see, I grew up watching Markiplier play FNAF just like every single other kid on this planet. I was 15 years old watching him on my iPhone 4S because I was too poor to have an iPhone 6. I would watch every single upload hiding in the comments looking at the jump scare time codes because I was, and still am, a scared little bitch. I've always been a casual fan of FNAF, loving the designs and the vibes of the overall games and marketing, being obsessed with the animatronic horror and how juicy Chica's ass is. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll stop. But my love and obsession over FNAF kind of fell through once I realized you have to solve literal saw traps to understand any story outside of the games. I always appreciated what FNAF brought to so many people as entertainment, and this movie definitely contributes to that, and that's great. This is 100% a movie for the fans, and really, just the fans. Because similar to the Mario movie, there really isn't a movie here. It just reference galore in addition to more lore, and it just makes fans jump for joy and clap. And that's fine, but when you step outside of the fan mentality and just look at this as a movie on paper and how it's executed, it's really really bad. And I can't for the life of me ever think of giving it a second watch unless I was physically forced to. But first, let me talk about the positives because there was a couple. The animatronics. Oh boy, those babies were amazing. Their movement, their design, the detail of the felt on the outside, it was actually great. It's really cool seeing this movie go the extra mile to make the Freddy gang a hefty, tangible aspect with the other actors in this movie. The kid actress that played Abby was also really good. I think she actually was the best actor in the movie. And I think this is her very first theatrical debut, so that's pretty cool. And of course, a simple joy that got even me giggling, like seeing Matt Pat and Corey X Kenshin on screen. I'm not gonna act like I didn't clap for them or get a huge smile seeing the people I've watched for years on a huge silver screen right in front of me. That is fun, and I'm glad that they were included. But that's as far as the positives really go for me. And even with those positives, they come with their own negatives. While the animatronics were super cool in their design, I feel like they were very underutilized in their own movie. More so so the movie relied too much on the cupcake little guy because it was easy to use him and switch the CGI shots and have him flying around doing scary things. Most of the FNAF game's actual actions happen off camera and it's pretty lame. I don't think they were used well in this movie at all, despite being really cool and really well designed. They really could have used them a lot better and they just didn't. And while I said the kid actress was great, she was given some pretty terrible dialogue to work with. So many times the flow was just interrupted by the most awkward spliced together conversations I've heard heard all year. And while her acting was good, everyone else sucked total butt. Even my goats, my legends, Joss Hutcherson and Matthew Lillard, they were pretty bad in this movie. It was disappointing. Also, this movie is genuinely ugly. The lighting is terrible for a movie that's based on games where lighting is a key game mechanic. This movie has a very low budget for what it is, because that's usually how Bloomhouse operates. They keep their budgets small to maximize profits, and for an IP as big as FNAF, it seems that they skimped on on everything except the allure of the tangible animatronics. This movie is already projected to absolutely dominate the box office, so I just hope when they inevitably get a sequel, they don't hold back. And then there's the PG-13 rating, a controversial decision, but while I understand why they did it, I can still recognize how they skimped out even in that department. They wanted this movie to appeal to kids and adult fans alike, because while the majority of the fan base that grew up with FNAF is paying rent and depressed, there's still a huge amount of kids getting into FNAF all of the time, but even for a PG-13 movie, this was incredibly tame. There are times when it wants to show blood, and times where blood doesn't even exist when it should, and it just takes you out of the movie. The goriest, grossest scene is a close-up of a face for like four seconds, and everything other than that is just really 
boring. Most kills happen off screen or when the camera cuts away, there's no creativity in trying to get around a PG-13 rating and showing it in a more fun and thoughtful way. I mean, even Happy Death Day, a movie I don't particularly like, has some more fun kills than anything in this and that's also rated PG-13 and from Bloomhouse. It makes the horror almost non-existent because there's no atmosphere here and since you don't even have good kills, there's just nothing here in the horror department. It uses its rating restriction as a crutch rather than a fun workaround and that's pretty boring. I mean, it's a series about child abductions and gross gear gore chomping and other bull and it just feels so sleeper. And then there's the story. Now yes, FNAF has always been convoluted, confusing, downright insane. And I saw critics and people saying that this one is too much of that and I couldn't agree less. This is one of the most bare bones stories you could ever make about Five Nights at Freddy's. The most boring and drawn out you could possibly do with any of the lore. It's like taking the secret sections of the Purple Man and stretching those out for nearly two hours. It's not a fun movie plot to dive into a dream sequence 30 times in the exact same manner and repetition and have only one of them actually matter and do something different. The main character, Michael, is the most uninteresting character to ever exist in this world. You can only watch a man freak out about his brother being kidnapped the exact same way so many times before you just don't care anymore. I mean, for a series spanning 20 games, 40 books, and 300 MatPat videos, they really only added like one story element to really care about, and boy, is it drawn out. I just watched Killers of the Flower Moon a week before this, and despite it being double the length of FNAF, FNAF felt longer. I was counting the minutes, counting the seconds, waiting for something to actually happen, even references or stupid fan service, anything, because it really just wastes your time. It would have been far more engrossing, far more engaging, far more entertaining to just put the security guard in the office for five whole nights and just sit there as he defends himself. People want to act like having a security guard in one location the whole movie would be bad, when it is a clear sign that, wow, you should watch more movies. They 100% could have made it way more creative and interesting just staying in the dang Freddy's Pizzeria the whole movie. The best part about small budget horror movies is being stuck in one single location, getting to know the ins and outs of everything in it, getting familiar with every wall and every crevice, and then by the end feeling absolutely amazing when you get to escape or leave. It makes the setting a character itself, and that would have benefited this movie immensely because this setting and location is unique, but somehow in a movie where that clearly should have happened, this location and setting just feels so unspecial because they want to cut to the boring human parts all of the time. I genuinely would have preferred a one-to-one -one recreation of the original games with some goofy elements here and there if it means I didn't have to fall asleep whenever the character fell asleep. It's constantly repeating the same scene over and over again. It's trying to be more cryptic and more mysterious than it has any right to be. It acts like withholding revelations and information until the end is smart and leading up to a big hurrah moment when it's just more annoying than anything. You can see everything that's going to happen from a mile away, and usually I never fault a movie for that. I never fault a movie for being predictable, but when there is nothing else being put in its place, then how can I not complain about it? You could argue that this movie wasn't really trying to be a full horror movie, and much more of a dark story instead. I mean, child souls getting trapped inside animatronics and having those animatronics act like kids is a fun and dark idea. It really represents what draws people into the messed up nature of FNAF, but that concept is really lost in this movie. It's not a good adaptation and translation to the screen, and rather feels stupid and immersion breaking. It feels like it has a total lack of confidence with an IP this huge and really holds back when you are told that it wouldn't. It feels dumbed down, but not for newcomers. For everyone. It just doesn't make sense. It's very, very weak. The story is just bad. Not fun, not entertaining. It does nothing to entice you more than the games ever did and just feels like a forced full length movie. You could have done so many things with a movie like this for fans of FNAF and not of FNAF. The whole allure of the pizza place and the animatronics really loses its magic in two minutes when the movie forgets about it. It's an underbaked, uncooked mess. It did not want to lean in too hard with the horror, but also didn't want to lean in too hard with the amusing, goofy stuff. It teeters on the line until the last five minutes and you just leave feeling unsatisfied that you waited years for this movie to come out and the best you got were two YouTuber cameos. It's crazy that the knockoff Five Nights at Freddy's movie that came out a couple years ago named Willy's Wonderland is far more entertaining than this. And that movie sucks, like really sucks, but it's actually fun and enjoys itself as a movie and does goofy things and has crazy scares and kills. It's stupid, but it's so much 
much better than this crap. Overall, I'll give the Five Nights at Freddy's movie a 2 out of 10. Hopefully, the Minecraft movie will bring me some joy in my life. <laughs> Ha 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 ha.